growing oxide daisies is really well worth it. If you caught our video last year where we showed you these beauties in full flower later in the season, you'll realise why I'm so keen on growing this. It's not really a garden plant that is promoted or sold heavily by any of the seed merchants or garden centres. It's more of a naturalised weed really, but what a wonderful cottage garden plant it makes. Now, we were asked last year that our video didn't really go into much detail about how to grow these and that's really because I don't honestly grow these. They, they grow themselves and I hoe them out and weed them where I don't want them. They will seed really prolifically. These patches have been just growing here in this gravel at the bottom of this drive in front of this barn for the last couple of years. Before that this was completely hoed and cleared but we decided just to let it go a little while because they just came into this area along with quite a few other plants that we grow in here including cow parsley, some those little things there, I forget the name of them now but they've just about finished flowering now. They're like a violet, a dog's tooth violet but they're not the proper woodland dog's tooth violet, it's more a, uh, a hardier full sun variety that. The cow parsley here again, we just let this seed into this bank with the dandelion and the hollyhock and then we've got aquilegia and in the back against the base of this wall there's some valerian coming through but also in this area you'll see these little seedlings that are just emerging now this is what you're looking for for oxide daisy it's almost creeping in nature the, the stems are almost rhizomic in appearance when you actually clear some of these leaves off you can see how they've grown up and the, the little leaf joints have been bared and these leaves, again quite typical, serrated edge, roundish on quite long stalks, tucked back on themselves almost. And this is a younger seedling, you'll see they're quite characteristic as they come through. But these are ideal for transplantation now into areas where you want fresh growth of oxide daisy later in the season. And all we do is get a, a trowel under these in this gravel seed bed effectively. And dig them up, transplant them into pots or into the final flowering positions. The other thing you can also do is to dig a whole large clump up like this and what you'll find is that there are multiple little rooted areas in there which can be divided and again split in the same way as you would any other herbaceous plant. And again they can either be replanted in this area or transplanted to other areas in the garden where you want to grow these on. We don't feed, we don't water, we do absolutely nothing with these and it's one of those plants that really likes it tough and seems to really thrive if you don't give it too much competition or feed. So no nitrogen feeds, no liquid feeds, no nothing on these. They grow on pretty tough areas of dry sandy soil around here. They'll also tolerate a heavy clay. They really are tough little things and you can see this one's starting to bud up already. So it won't be too long before this explodes into a full mound. We're at the end of April, beginning of May now, and these will only take about another three or four weeks before we've got some colour in the first flush of flower. And then they'll just explode with a full flowering, which is so spectacular. And we'll show you that. I'll put a, an end card on the back end of this video so that you can click through and watch my video on these and see just why you should consider getting some seedlings or some seed and getting going with this.